Today is the start of a new series on this channel. Nime has started season 3 of the Just Nime It Challenge. Where every Wednesday a new data analytics or data science problem is published for the community to tackle. These are beginner friendly and therefore perfect targets started. Today, we will take a look at the first challenge. It is about stock price analysis over time. The concrete task is. You work in finance and one of your clients wants to understand the value of different company stocks over time. Given a data set of stock prices, you decide to use simple moving averages window length equals 20 to tackle this task. What companies have an upward trend for the most recent data and what companies have a downward trend? Let's get started. After creating a workflow in our local Nime workspace, we follow the link in the challenge description and download the data set. We then browse to the workflow location in our Nime workspace and in the workflow folder, create a new folder named data. Once the folder has been created, we move the downloaded data set into that new folder. We then can go back to Nime. Having moved the data set to the data folder location will allow us to open the file from the workflow data area. The file will become part of the workflow, so if we share it later with other users, they do not have to download it on top of the workflow. As it is a CSV file, let's find a CSV reader. Right-click and configure and select relative to from the read from dropdown. Then select current workflow data area from the next dropdown. When then clicking on Browse, we can select the file. A preview of the data will appear. Click OK and then go ahead and execute the node. As you can see, there are more than 600,000 rows in the data set. Now that you have learned how to use the workflow data area to store your files, we will go ahead with a walkthrough of my solution to this challenge. Bear in mind that there are multiple ways to solve each challenge and the authors leave sufficient space for everyone to be creative and to add their own take to the solution. The final solution works like this. There is one component for the user to execute. The component view allows the user to select a start and an end date to determine a time frame for company stock performance to be analyzed. Once dates have been entered, the refresh button can be clicked to re-execute the workflow that generates for line graphs. When clicking refresh, in the background, the data set is filtered for the selected date range and the top and bottom 10 performing stocks based on their 20 days moving average are determined based on absolute and relative difference of the moving average at the beginning and the end of the selected time frame. Let's now dive into the detail to better understand the logic behind this one component. We start by adding the input widgets, to date and time input widgets for the start, and the end date and the refresh button widget. By connecting the refresh button widget to the other two, the workflow will be fully re-executed every time the button is clicked. The widget output ports lead into a component. CSV file whilst filtering for the selected date range. The component has streaming enabled which speeds up processing when reading larger data sets. Let's look into what this component has inside. First of all there is the CSV reader we set up at the beginning. Then we connect the variable port from the start date to a variable expressions node. This node takes in the selected date and calculates the date 40 days before. This ensures that later on we have enough data to calculate a moving average also for the start date. We then connect the variable to a merge variable node and after that the CSV reader and the merge variables to a rule-based row filter node. This node filters out any records that are without the selected date range. Next, we add a column expressions node to add a column that extracts the date only from the date column that currently still has a timestamp included. This node finally passes the data back to the component output port which routes it back into the main workflow. You can also notice how in the top right corner a symbol is shown that indicates that streaming has been enabled for this node. The small arrows on the nodes indicate that the node supports streaming whereas the small crosses indicated streaming is not supported. Let's zoom back out into the main workflow and see how streaming can be enabled. First of all, you need to download the Nime Streaming Execution extension. If you later on decided to download my workflow, Nime is smart enough to pick up on the extension and suggest to download it. 
Then you go to the configuration menu of the component and select the job manager selection tab. From the drop-down choose simple streaming. The select a chunk size to define the number of rows per table to be processed in parallel. I have chosen 10,000 for now, but when optimizing you play around with this. Then click OK to confirm the changes. Streaming has the potential to speed up when larger amounts of data are loaded and processed. Next, we add a column filter node to remove columns we don't need. In this case we want to calculate the moving average based on the close value. We want to display the company and plot the development over time. So we keep only the company, close and both date columns and remove everything else. Now, we add a group loop start node. This handy node allows us to filter the data for one company at a time and to do further processing on the data, which is then collected in a loop and node that we will add in just a little bit. When configuring this node, make sure that you only add those columns to the include section that you want to and individually process. In our case, that is just the company column. To complete the loop, we are adding a moving average node and pass the output to a loop and node. We configure the moving average node to calculate the moving average for the close column and we define the window size as 20 using the backward simple type. This is also why we moved the selected start date earlier back by 40 days as for rows without 20 or more preceding dates the moving average is shown as a missing value. Now we add a column renamer node to rename some columns, followed by another rule based row filter to filter for the selected date without the added days. After that, just to be safe, we add a missing value node and configure it so that a row with a missing value in a double type column is removed from the table. In my solution I want to focus on automatically identifying the top and bottom 10 performing companies in the selected time frame. I am using a very simplistic approach here. I take the moving average of the first and the last date in the range for each company and then calculate the absolute and relative difference. In order to get the first and last moving averages, we add a group by node. In the configuration dialog, we only include the company column as group column. In the manual aggregation tab, we then add the moving average close column twice and select first for one and last for the other as aggregation method. Now that we have the first and last value for each company, we add a column expression node that implements the simple calculation logic to determine absolute and relative difference between the two values. We add two columns and add the respective formula. Next we add for top KRO filter to the filter for top performers and to for bottom performers. We will determine top and bottom performers by absolute and relative difference of their first and last moving averages in the selected period separately. The top K row filter allows us to define the number of rows to keep and how to sort the table. So in order, as an example, to get the top 10 performing companies by absolute difference, we configure the node to keep the first 10 rows after sorting the absolute difference column in descending order. We do the same for the other nodes by switching to the relative difference column and for bottom performers by sorting in ascending order. With the right companies identified for all four scenarios, we now add a joiner node. The top input port is connected with the output port of the missing value node from earlier. The bottom input port is connected to the top KRO filter node for each scenario. Each joiner node is configured to do an inner join on the common column named company. This way we only keep the rows of the companies that the top KRO filter kept and all others are removed. The last step is to add charts for each scenario. I have chosen to use the generic eCharts view node that can be used with the AI assistant that comes with Nine. We will ask the AI assistant to generate the code for a line graph with a legend for the companies. It is really incredible what a brief description can do for us here with the help of generative AI. And there you have it. The solution is fully up and running. I hope you have enjoyed. As I am publishing this video, the next challenge has been published. It is about CO2 emissions. I am no expert in that field but I can promise you now, I will have a solution to that problem in the near future as well. Until next time.